This video is going to be a comprehensive beginner's guide to the Insta360 X3. I'm going to show you everything you need to know so you can start shooting awesome video with your camera. So let's go. The Insta360 X3 comes with a case, a USB charging cable and a small guidebook. In order to use your Insta360 X3, you'll need a micro SD card. I recommend the fastest SanDisk Xtreme Pro. Bear in mind 360 videos are very large, so smaller storage SD cards can get full quickly. You can charge the X3 by plugging the USB cable into the charging slot at the side of the camera. A full charge should take around 90 minutes, although you will probably have some charge when you first get the camera. The power button is located on the side of the camera. Once pressed, the camera screen will activate and you will be asked to activate the camera via the Insta360 app. The X3 is first and foremost an action camera. It's small, light and has rubber grips. Along with the power button, you'll find a quick menu button, shutter button and media button. The shutter doors conceal the micro SD card slot, removable battery and charging port. Make sure when these doors are closed that you can't see any of the yellow markings. This ensures the doors are fully closed and the camera is watertight. The X3 also features a quarter inch mount compatible with dozens of accessories. The two inch touch screen dominates the camera and allows you to control all of the options. Let's take a look at them now. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through all of the settings, options, and the menu system available um, in the X3. So let's start by swiping up and looking at all of the video and photo options available in the main menu. You can see it's split between 360 and single lens um, options, but let's just go through the 360 options. You have things like the normal video, active HDR, time shift, bullet time, loop recording, and these are all different types of video. Oh, there's a description at the bottom there that says what that kind of video is, but for most of the time, you're gonna be using just the standard or HDR video modes. And again, in single lens mode, there are slightly less options, but again, it's just gonna tell you exactly what each option can do at the bottom there. So back on the main preview screen, if you click where it says 5.7K, this is where you can select the frame rate and resolution options. Um, and most of the time you're gonna be sticking, sticking to 5.7K at 30 frames per second. But if you wanted to change to 4K at a higher frame rate, this is where you'd do it. You also have the options if you slide from the right to go to the manual, um, manual settings for selecting shutter speeds, ISO, white balance, Again, you can stick to automatic for that, but if you were in um, more challenging environments, you would go to manual mode, and I'm gonna take you through the best settings for videos and photos later, where we'll fiddle around with these a bit more. Now, going back to the main menu screen, let's just take a closer look at the options here. Um, Active HDR allows you to increase the quality of your video without doing any editing. Time-lapse obviously is for shooting time-lapse and time shifts is a kind of moving time-lapse, which is more done in the editing process. So Active HDR is great to use in bright conditions. It definitely does make a difference. I'll show you the difference a bit later, but for most shots outside, you should use Active HDR. Time-lapse videos can be shot at 8K resolution and here is where you'll change the interval of those time-lapses depending on what kind of time-lapse you wanna create. Now all of these other settings are slightly less commonly used, like interval, loop, recording, star lapse. Um, I won't, won't go into every detail of these now because it would just take so long to make this video. But definitely something that is more commonly gonna be used is the photo options, which again have similar options to video. You can go into choosing the resolution. There's two options available. 18 megapixels and 72 megapixels. I'll let you guess which one is probably the better one to use. You can also set a timer here for up to um, three, five to 10 seconds. You also have the option to do manual and automatic modes. The difference here, you have the option to choose raw HDR modes and pure shot. Pure shot is basically an aut automatically boost the quality of your photos without you having to do anything. Whereas RAW allows you to keep all the information available if you wanted to do the editing in a program like Lightroom or Photoshop later. Now, if you go to the single lens mode, obviously you have the standard photo and video options. Again, with options for choosing resolution, frame rates. Here you actually have more options when it comes to resolution and frame rates. The maximum is 4K at 30 frames per second. However, 3.6K at 60 frames per second is also a pretty good option if you wanted to shoot anything that's a fast moving video, action video, that extra frame rate will um, make that a little bit more clearer. 
Here you also have options for field of view, which is not available in the 360 mode. This is basically how wide angle the video appears. Linear is very normal, like shooting with your phone. Action shot is like shooting with a wide screen um, fish eye lens. Field of view plus is the widest angle available and you would use that for stuff like on a bike, on a motorcycle, maybe on your skis or something like that, but it's limited to 2.7K at 60 frames per second. Now an interesting mode that's only available in single lens mode is me mode and this is what it looks like. It basically uh, en enables you to shoot these kind of vlog like videos where you are automatically placed in the center of the frame. This doesn't require any editing. You just need to select this mode, hold a invisible selfie stick close to you and make sure the camera is kind of at a 90 degree angle to you and you will always be in the center of the frame no matter where you move. I think this is a pretty awesome setting actually for the X3. But now let's take a look at some of the general camera settings. And I've labeled here on the screen what each one of these settings does. Some of them you won't need to use if you're not going to use the dive case, you will never need to select that option. And if you're never going to use AirPods for um, audio, then obviously you don't need to worry about that option. And so here are the more in-depth camera settings. To be honest, for most of the time you won't need to uh, worry about these. The only thing I would immediately change if you go to video sharpness, for some reason it's automatically selected as high, but I would select medium. It just gives your videos a more realistic look. The rest of the settings are fairly standard and you don't really need to change them. You may need to calibrate the gyro if you find the stabilization doesn't work that well. There should also be a webcam setting coming soon and you would go to USB mode to select that when that comes in a later update. But that's about it guys for the settings of the camera but now let's go into what I think are the best settings for photos and videos. So having used the X3 now for a couple of months in quite a few varied uh, environments and conditions, I think I pretty much nailed down the best settings to use in both video and photo modes. So I've just taken you through the settings that are available on the camera. Um, you won't need to use all of them. Some of them are um, kind of irrelevant, but there are things you need to consider depending on where you're gonna shoot and what you're gonna shoot. So let's start off by assuming you're gonna be shooting in good lighting conditions and you are gonna be shooting in 360 mode. So 360 video mode, you would either select video or HDR video. If you were in an outdoor environment that was particularly bright and you didn't want to worry too much about manual settings, then select HDR video. This mode combines several exposures together and just increases the quality of your video, reduces overexposure, but you aren't able to select any manual settings. It's all done in the camera for you. So if you were not confident in you know, selecting those manual modes, then HDR video would be a bit of a shortcut to do that. And it works quite well. In the standard video mode, select 5.7K at 30 frames per second or 25. Once again, in good lighting conditions, if it's overcast or a sunny day outside, then you will be content to stick with automatic mode for most of the settings. And the only thing I would ensure, and I think this is automatically selected, is to select vivid in the color options. Standard is slightly less colorful. Vivid forces the camera to add a little bit more color and vibrance to your videos, which I think uh, most of the time just results in better looking video. Log mode is if you wanted to color correct your video in a program like Premiere Pro, but that is a bit advanced. When shooting in lower light, more difficult environments like indoors or when it's nighttime, then the manual settings are gonna be uh, much more important. You're gonna definitely wanna choose manual mode. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to ensure that the ISO is as low as possible. Thankfully, this big screen on the X3 does allow you to preview the quality of your videos. And a general rule of thumb for video is to make the shutter speed twice as much as the frame rate. So if we selected 30 frames per second for our frame rate, then we would go to shutter speed and we would select 60. Now, this is a general rule of thumb which um, filmmakers tend to roughly stick by, but it is not something that's absolutely necessary. Just look at the preview and see if there's anything very overexposed or too dark depending on the environment that you're in. I've shown you here the settings for videos that I've shot in manual mode and you can kind of copy these settings here. For most of the time I do stick to this rule, however it's not 100% of the time you need to experiment. 
Okay, let's go on to photo settings. Now for standard 360 photos, you have the option of shooting HDR or just non-HDR photos. HDR photos, once again, like the video, is several exposures combined together. It will result in a much clearer image with, again, less overexposure and more details in darker areas. The photos definitely do make a difference when you shoot in HDR. The thing you want to consider is whether you want to shoot in raw mode or if you want to select pure shot mode. Pure shot does actually shoot raw photos. However, the camera applies all of the color and um, changes that you would make manually if you shot on raw mode. The camera does it itself using pure shot mo mode, using the AI in the app or the desktop software. So basically it's a shortcut to getting much better quality images. When shooting images in low light, the manual settings are even more important. As you can see, it entirely depends on the amount of available light. The more light you have, the lower the ISO should be. That's basically the main thing to consider, getting the ISO as low as possible without making the image too dark to see any details or make it worthwhile shooting at all. My number one recommended accessory is the invisible selfie stick. This is pretty much essential for shooting 90% of the shots I make with the Insta360 X3. There are a few different types available from Insta360 or other providers, but you really need one to get the most out of this camera. You may also like to get a mini tripod if you want to keep your camera still. There are dozens of other accessories, but these are optional depending on what kind of videos you're going to shoot. Just take a look at all of the different bundles that are available and think about the kind of videos you're going to create. There's probably something there for you. Take your X3 somewhere outside in good lighting conditions. Attach your camera to your invisible selfie stick and extend it to between half and full length. In order to shoot third person videos, place the selfie stick diagonally behind you. For first person shots, hold the stick in front of you. If you're surrounded by interesting features, hold the stick straight up for 20 to 30 seconds. And maybe change the height of the tripod to achieve slightly different effects. These are the basic 360 camera shots which allow you to capture yourself with the invisible selfie stick as well as the environment around you. Of course you can also be moving when you take these shots. The X3 features excellent stabilization so you can use these techniques while walking, running, on a bike, scooter, roller skates, skateboard, whatever you are willing to risk. There are dozens of other shooting techniques for capturing unique video with your Insta360 X3, but it's a good start with these more basic shots and experiment from there. You can also take a look at the Insta360 app, which has some tutorials and automatic editing modes that allow you to create these effects. The app literally takes you step by step how to shoot the video, and then all you need to do is put your clips into the app, select the relevant effect, and the app will do everything for you. When using the single lens mode, you shoot with the camera like you would with your phone or a GoPro. The main option to be concerned with is choosing the field of view, which ranges from more natural linear to widescreen action shots, which obviously are more suited to action sequences. As we saw before, there are quite a few settings in the 360 mode, for example, active HDR and time lapse. As I mentioned, active HDR increases the quality of your video, particularly if it's a very bright outside, it can really um, reduce overexposure. So you can use all of the techniques I've just shown you using the active HDR mode. The only time when this really isn't applicable is if you're shooting in low light conditions where active HDR doesn't work very well. This camera is also particularly good at shooting 360 time lapses as it can do so at 8K resolution, which is quite impressive. Attach your X3 to a tripod and put it to about head height. The main option you want to be concerned with is the interval option. This is basically how often the camera will take a photo and then at the end it will combine all of these photos and turn it into a video, which will create the time lapse effect. For most time lapses, you want to probably do one second or two second intervals. This would be applicable if you want to shoot a time lapse of cars going by, of people moving, of the clouds moving. At an interval of one second, 15 minutes of shooting a time lapse will result in a 30 second video. The much higher intervals are really designed for much longer, longer time lapses, which you may need to leave overnight uh, to really achieve any time lapse effect. Most of the creativity when creating videos with the X3 is done in the editing process. Connect your X3 to the Insta360 app. Go to the gallery where you can see your clips. Select your first clip. 
you have two reframing options, which is how you turn your 360 video into something like this. Snap Edit allows you to physically move your phone to reframe your video. It's like using your phone as a camera to point where you it's like using your phone as a camera to point where you want in your shot. Manually reframing allows you to select keyframes along your video which will slowly pan from one point to another. In both of these modes, you can also zoom in and out. In the manual reframing editor, you have a lot more options including changing speed, trimming and color correction. I have a whole video that goes through the whole editing process, so check the description to watch it and it will take you step by step how to use every single one of the options in the app. Once you've finished editing, you can tap the export button and select reframed video. You should tap on quick export and select custom. Here you can select settings for higher quality video too. Choose the highest resolution and a bit rate of at least 60 megabits per second. Now your video will export to your phone where you are able to watch it or upload it to Instagram, Facebook or wherever you want. There is also a free desktop editor, the Insta360 Studio, where you can do this manual reframing as well. And the export options are slightly more advanced and you can get higher quality exports. However, the studio does not have the same range of effects and AI editors as the app. So that's it guys, that is a quick beginner's guide to the Insta360 X3. Now obviously I have not gone through every single option available as to do so would probably take an hour at least. So this was just a quick guide so you can get started if you've never used the X3 or any other 360 camera before. So hopefully that has been useful and has explained to you what this camera can do and I hope it has inspired you to go out there and start shooting. I'm sure you will be able to get some very advanced shots quicker than you think. So please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. There'll be plenty of more tutorials for this camera coming up soon. So thanks for that and see you soon.